and we're live. Welcome back to the Better Than Bitcoin podcast, where I talk about the future of money. I'm your host, Jamie Dabascus. A lot has happened to Bitcoin over the past week, so let's talk about it. For a little market recap, in the short term, Bitcoin looks very bullish, which is very good. Uh, by short term, I mean like the next few weeks or so, like two weeks, I would say. Uh, Bitcoin looks to have a small, complete five waves up from last week's correction, therefore confirming the correction from 7700 on December 23rd to 6850 on January 2nd as an Elliott Wave 2 pullback. So 1, 2. Now we have a complete Wave 1 and 2, I can accurately identify a target for the Wave 3. Elliott Wave 3s are typically 1.618 times the length of Wave 1 added on to the bottom of Wave 2. I've, I know I've said that before in previous episodes of the podcast, but I like to repeat it just to get it in your head. So uh, let me show you uh, what I mean by this. So here is chart of Bitcoin, the two-hour chart, ranging from uh, this here is December 17th and up to currently. You can see uh, this is a smush one, two, three, four, five. I know I'm just wave slapping, but... That is a confirmed five waves up. And since that's five waves up, we can treat that as a w entire wave one. And since in the past week, around January 3rd, that's where it bottomed at the wave two because it had five waves up right here. So you one, two, three, four, five. And now we're looking for another wave two. So one, two. So like a mini wave one, two in three because it's all fractal. I'm just going to place those there just so. It's out of the way. Um, so in this little pullback right here, the wave the wave two here is smushed all together, just one big bar. In this little five waves up right here, we're looking for a wave two pullback, which is usually 0.5 to 0.786 percent retracement. So my little pullback right now, I'm looking for. Uh, the high 7100s to uh, low 7000s. That's my little box. It will dip into that box and then go on the wave three of three, which is the most profitable move. So besides this little micro count right here, we want the big wave. So let me calculate what my target is. So this is a wave one and a two. This We have to calculate the length of this wave one right here. So this is around, I'm just going to round this is around 70, let's round up to 7,700 minus, where's this bottom at? 6,400, round down. So this, is around, this was around a $1,300 move right here. And you multiply that by 1.618. And you get a incoming wave 3 move of 2,103. So you add that to the bottom of the wave two, which is 68.54. So my target is around, you can round up again. I know I'm doing a lot of rounding, makes it inaccurate, but usually things hyper usually crypto is like the hyper extend. So like that's why I'm rounding a lot to make up for that a little bit. So I'm looking around the 8,000, the high, high 8,000 ish area to basically 9,000 as my wave three target in the short term. Hold on. Okay. So that's my way through target, usually 9,000 ish to high, high 8,000s. Uh, keep in mind, Bitcoin might, might land a few dollars short of it because I was rounding a lot. Uh, or it might hyper extend completely way past that target in a mania like scenario when people want to buy, buy, buy. Now, besides the good things I'm seeing in the charts, I want to talk about an article that was posted on the Coinbase blog. This blog is written by the CEO of Coinbase, Brian Armstrong, and the article is called, that I'll go over today, is um, What Will Happen to Cryptocurrencies in the 2020s? So basically, he wrote 11 bullet points in this article about what he sees in the next decade in terms of crypto. So I'm going to go over these bullet points real briefly. Um, I don't have a uh, news article for today. It's just I'm just going to go over these bullet points, and that's going to be it for the episode. But uh, these bullet points, I'm just going to summarize them. So let's go over them right now. First bullet point he goes over is scalability. Brian points out that the main issue for Bitcoin and other cryptos is the problem of scalability. Bitcoin currently can only process around 7 transactions per second, while uh, 
an institution like Visa can process up to 24,000 transactions per second. So Bitcoin is way behind. We're in the very early adopters phase, even though Bitcoin's at like 7,000 ish dollars per Bitcoin. That's still t- I still consider that early adopter. Anyways, Brian believes this, that this problem for blockchains, not just Bitcoin, will need to be solved for cryptos to be used in real world transactions. Uh, So his second bullet point is about privacy. Brian sees a privacy crypto going mainstream because most people don't like their transactions to be public. For those of you that don't know, all transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain are transparent but not public. The the main difference between transparent and public is uh, transparent means the amount transferred, transaction memory size, the time that transaction occurred, pretty much everything but people's names are public. So it will just be a jumbled list of um, your address. It would be a jumbled list of letters and numbers. And uh, so that you can see address to address. Oh, that address and 50 bitcoins to this address. But you don't see that address is associated with this guy right here. Or it's associated with Joe. That's Joe's address. You don't see that. It's not like fully public. We can see people, what exactly people are doing, but it is kind of, if someone tells you, oh, that's my address, then you can see everything they've done before. A lot of people don't like that, so I can, I agree with Brian on this one. I can see a privacy crypto going mainstream. So the third, bu- uh, third bullet point that uh, Brian brings up is called consolidation. When Brian talks about consolidation, he basically means that out of all the crypto projects currently out, like all the alt alternate coins or altcoins, only a select few or handful will actually be used and basically have value. The rest will completely die off in the next 10 years and become completely worthless. And it's up to the people to decide which ones are worthless and which ones are not worthless. So his fourth, going on to his fourth bullet point, uh, from trading to utility, Brian says that in the next decade, he sees cryptos being less speculative, get-rich-quick assets and more utility-driven assets. I think that just says it all pretty much. His fifth bullet point is the rise of the crypto startup. Brian sees the next wave of tech startups be crypto based or at least have some crypto mechanic. This wave will be com- comparable to the dot com startup craze when everyone started to make like tech companies or actual tech companies and that whole mania of people buying those stocks because uh, they thought it would get them rich quick. It was pretty much a bubble. Uh, bullet point number six, uh, emerging markets. In this section, Brian sees Bitcoin and other cryptos being more prevalent safe havens for people in countries with collapsing currencies and collapsing economies as pretty much a protection against those that collapse, that inflation that's happening to those currencies. Uh, I, I know this is already being used now, like in Venezuela, Bitcoin's pretty big in Venezuela because... The economy is bad in Venezuela. The currency they use there, I forgot what it's called. The currency there is pretty much worthless and people are using Bitcoin to transact. Uh, But I think what he means by this bullet point is um, it's going to become more prevalent. And I'm guessing he's predicting a lot of governments will collapse in the next 10 years. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I mean, Iran is happening now and Iran is actually using Bitcoin. Bitcoin spiked in Iran. Uh, for usage. Anyways, moving on to the seventh bullet point, uh, institutions. Brian sees more institutions getting into crypto and growth and uh, Coinbase's custodial service for managing crypto assets for institutions. His eighth bullet point is central bank digital currencies. Brian sees more governments like the U.S. attempt to digitize their currencies. Brian says the already present USD coin that was made by Coinbase. Obviously, he's shilling off his own coin. Yeah. He has to say it. I mean, he, he made it. So he made it. Uh, Coinbase and Circle made the USD coin. And he basically says, like, oh, maybe the U.S. government will use that. He's just being hopeful. But I think the U.S. might try to make their own currency. He also states that, too. But um, he was, like, leaning towards his own coin. Mm. Anyways. Bullet point number nine is maturing market structure. Brian points out here that the crypto exchange, the or the crypto exchanges that we saw in the past decade were actually 
brokerages, exchanges, custodians, and clearinghouses all bundled into one. Brian sees all the big crypto exchanges separating from themselves and becoming different companies to each focus on being a brokerage, exchange, custodian, etc. Almost like how Coinbase is now separating into Coinbase Pro, regular Coinbase, uh, Coinbase Custody, Coinbase... Oh. There's, you get the point. They're separating into all those little categories. The tenth bullet point is that decentralization will grow. Brian sees not only existing crypto projects to get more and more decentralized, but already existing companies adding a crypto element to decentralize the elements of their business. I think this is less likely to happen because th- this is this basically this tenth bullet point is basically mass mass adoption of crypto and cryptocurrencies in general for like the entire world. That's like big big companies. He's basically calling for a mass mass adoption in ten years. That would be one of the fastest growing industries i guess you can call it in like the entire world i I know it took like i know it took like didn't take like i don't know 50 something years for like tvs to be everywhere and he's basically saying that bitcoin will be mass mass adopted in 20 years that's gonna be crazy anyways the 11th and final bullet point is what he's called the billionaire flipping Brian sees, he mentioned, at a price of $200,000 per Bitcoin, that a majority of the world's billionaires will be from cryptocurrency. So Brian sees this as a good thing because a lot more pro-technology people will be rich and powerful. Already, a lot of crypto people have turned to philanthropy. An example of this is the Pineapple Fund, which is a Bitcoin fund that gives Bitcoin directly to charities. Like I pointed out in the last episode, charities benefit can, but charities can benefit greatly from the transparency and decentralized nature of cryptocurrencies. I know that a decent amount of charity money goes towards actually running the charity and not towards like the actual charity. So, but what if all charities automated the process through decentralized co- smart contracts? That can cut running costs of the of the charity company, and uh, which will mean more money going to the actual charity. So. That's all the bullet points that he had in the blog about what will happen to cryptocurrencies in the 2020s. So that's all for episode 10 or episode 11 of the Better Than Bitcoin podcast. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Jamie Damascus and uh, peace.